Hey guys, I'm GML Waffle, and today I'm going to be showing you how to add a charged jump or super jump to your game. So, as usual, I have things set up here. We have a player sprite. It's just a 32 by 32, but I've created just this little blob. We also have a wall sprite. It's just a regular 32 by 32 black filled in. And we have the objects created. So we have a player object, a wall object, and a draw debug. None of these objects have any code or anything in them. They don't have parents, nothing set up for them. We will be going over all of that in just a minute. And then if we go into our room that we've created here, I just have a small 640 by 480 room with the wall object lining the room and the draw object created and the player object created. So the first thing we want to do to add a charged jump to our game, we have to go into our player and add a create event. In this create event, we're going to initialize a few variables. So the first variable is going to be grav for our gravity, and it's going to equal 0 0.4. Then we're going to set V speed for our vertical speed of movement, and then jump speed, which is going to equal 7. So going over these variables really quickly, we are going to have our gravity set to 0 0.4, our vertical speed is going to be set to 0, and our jump speed is going to be set to 7. So the next thing we want to do is actually add gravity and collision. So we're going to add a step event. In this first script that we're creating, we're going to comment off and call this gravity and collision. So if you add these three slashes rather than two, it won't act as a normal comment if you place it at the top of your script. What it'll actually do is change the title that it gives the script. So going back in here, as the title suggests, we're going to add gravity and collision. So the first thing we want to do is say if our V speed is less than 10, V speed plus equals grav. So if our current vertical speed is ever less than 10, which remember in the create event we said it's zero, then our vertical speed is going to plus equal gravity. So after that, we want to say if place meeting x, y plus v speed con wall, open bracket here, while not place meeting x, y plus sign v speed con wall and inside there we're going to say y plus equals sign v speed and then underneath here we're going to say vertical speed equals zero and then underneath all of it we're going to say y plus equals v speed so if this looks familiar, it's because I've actually covered this exact same code before in my platformers series. So in that series, I go over all of this code, exactly what it does, but to give you a basic rundown, it is checking to see if there is collision with the wall, but if it's not in collision with the wall, it's going to add to our Y position, our vertical speed. So that is the quickest way that we can set up gravity and collision all in one simple 10 line code. Next thing we want to do is actually work on our charge to jump. So we're going to triple comment here, jumping. All right, so to get started, we're going to say if place meeting x, y plus one con wall, and I added too many parentheses there. So we first want to check to see if the wall object is below us, because if the wall object isn't below us, we don't want our player to be able to jump. So if we're in collision with the wall object below us, the first thing we're going to handle is the jumping charged. So we're going to say if keyboard check, and then for this tutorial, we're going to use ord w, because we're going to use the W key for our jumping. So if W is pressed, then our jump speed 
is going to plus equal 0 0.1. So if we are holding down the W key, jump speed is going to constantly add 0.1 to itself. Then we want to say else if keyboard check released board W our vertical speed is going to minus equal our jump speed. Then the last thing we want to do is set our jump speed back to 7 because that was its original value. So going back through this, if keyboard check or W, so if we're holding down the W key, then our jump speed is going to add 0.1 constantly. Then we're checking to see if we release the W key with this code here. And if the key is released, then our vertical speed is going to minus equal our jump speed. So this will give us our jump. Then all we're doing is resetting jump speed back to its original value. So the last thing we have to do is add a normal jump. So if the player doesn't hold down the jump key and just wants to do a normal jump, we are going to say else if keyboard check pressed or w and all we're going to do in here is v speed minus equals jump speed so we're just getting a normal jump so for this one we're checking keyboard check pressed because this one checks to see if it's being pressed and held whereas this one just checks to see if it's pressed a single time so if it's pressed a single time we are going to do a normal jump for a charge jump, we're going to check to see if it's being pressed. And if it is being pressed constantly, we're going to add to jump speed. And as soon as it's released, we're going to have our charged jump. So you're probably wondering, why don't we just have the normal jump placed before the charged jump? Well, you have to think that the computer is going to constantly run through this code, but it's reading it from top to bottom. So if we had this keyboard check pressed before all of this, imagine that you press the W key and you're holding it down. Well, it's first going to see that it was pressed and it's going to do a normal jump before it does any of that. So we want to set this code before we set the pressed. And here I'm just adding some comments saying that this is the jumping normal. So we know what it does. All right. so. With that done, if we go ahead and run the game, you'll see that if we press the W, we have a normal jump. And if we hold it down and then release, we have a much higher charged jump. So you're probably wondering why we have con draw debug. It's always good to add a feature like this with a draw event that simply draws your variables to the screen so you can see them in real time and see exactly how they're acting, how they're working, and what you need to change. So for this, we're going to say draw text. Our X position is going to be 64. The Y is going to be 64. And the text that we're going to be drawing is first, we're going to say jump speed. And then we're going to add a string. And inside string, we're going to get the variable jump speed from our player. So to do that, we're going to say obj underscore player dot jump speed. So going through this, the first thing we're doing is initializing draw text. So we're saying that, hey, we want to draw this text and this text at this position on the screen. So this first part here is just drawing a normal string. But over here, we have to say string and what the function string will actually do for you is it will take a variable, say a variable that is currently set to a number value, and it will convert it to a string in a format like this. And the variable that we wanted to convert to a string is jump speed that is located in obj underscore player. We had to call on it like this because we didn't set it to a global variable. So closing that now, if we run the game, we now have the jump speed currently being drawn to the screen. So jump speed is 7, and we press up a single time, we get our normal jump. But if we press and hold it, jump speed is constantly adding 0.1 until we release. All right, so that's working good and everything, but you might want to limit the amount of jump speed you can actually have. 
So if I go to a crazy ridiculous number like 30 and then release, it's going way too high, way too fast. We want to limit it to where it only jumps maybe twice as much as the actual jump speed. So to do that, if we go back into our player, step event, and the jumping script, underneath everything else, we're going to say set max jump speed. And to set the max jump speed, we're going to say if our jump speed is greater than, we'll say 15, for example, then we're going to reset jump speed back equal to 15. So it can never go higher than 15. Again, you can have this number and this number be whatever you want them to be. These are just the values that I chose for this tutorial. So if we run this now, and we press and hold the W key, our jump speed now never gets greater than 15. And when we release, it resets back to 7, and so on and so forth. So that is how you can add a cool charge jump to your game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, comment what you thought down below, and don't forget to subscribe for future videos. As always, I'll see you guys next time.